Hello, uh, welcome to the Jenkins Contributor Summit. Today is June 25th, so thanks to everyone who attended uh, the CDCon. Um, if you attended uh, the full conference, you already had three days uh, full of various talks, including many uh, Jenkins talks from uh, users, from practitioners, uh, from tech leaders. Uh, um, and today we actually focus on uh, contributors and we uh, will talk about how we evolve Jenkins, we will talk about the various issues and topics we would like to address, including interoperability, technical changes in the Jenkins score. We will also have say, a track for newcomers and uh, I think we can start. Okay, so it's switching now. So what we will have um, today, so we have multiple sessions. I will show um, the full agenda later. But today we will just have an overview of what is going on in Jenkins. We will do some announcements. Uh, we talk about the project and team updates, uh, and then all our sub-projects, special interest groups, etc. We will be also able to make the updates. Uh, the idea that uh, this session will be relatively short. If you want, uh, here's a link uh, to the Contributor Summit slide deck and the problem mark could uh, share it in the chat so that everyone can access it. So our slide deck is already public. Uh, yes, Kara? Oh, so you want to promote, sorry. I'll, I'll take care of that, Oleg. I'm, I'm okay. working that uh, now. No. Okay, so yeah. Uh, welcome to the Jenkins Contributor Summit. This is, if this is a first uh, time for you, I will quickly explain what happens. The idea is to actually gather contributors from around the world, or at least from uh, a time zone uh, you have. So this summit happens in the, uh, the America's time zone, and I hope that the next summit will happen in a packed time zone, so that we will have a different uh, um, uh, slice of the community participating. Uh, but still, uh, we have uh, many people and hopefully we'll have more people joining. Uh, what is uh, the Contributor Summit? So this is an event which is focused again on contributors. Uh, it's hosted by contributors, so you can see various uh, not so finished slides. You can uh, see some organization blunders, etc. So we are not uh, doing a marketing conference. We are focused on the contributors, on this live discussion. We invite everyone to participate, to show live demos. We will have a session uh, for uh, lightning uh, talks, uh, which is still available. We will have an end user panel and uh, everything is about conversation. So the goal of this summit is not to show many cool presentations, but uh, uh, just uh, to actually uh, achieve something as a community. Um, it's a one day event. Uh, actually, the event will last for six hours and uh, yeah, uh, full agent is available uh, on the links. So once you get the uh, slide deck links, you can just navigate because this slide deck is public. Okay. Uh, there are a few items for us. Uh, so firstly, uh, if you're a newcomer, we have a newcomer track uh, where Mark uh, will be talking about how to contribute to Jenkins. Uh, this time, this is the first time when we have an end user panel. Uh, we have uh, multiple users of Jenkins joining and they will share their experiences, uh, talk about the issues that they experience with Jenkins and expectations from its evolution. So this is the first experiment and I hope it will be successful. And uh, if so, let's keep doing uh, these sessions. And uh, then we'll have a pretty long -term conference uh, where we'll talk about topics which we discussed uh, before the summit in the community. Uh, so there was Google Doc where everyone was able to contribute. And uh, we agree that we will have three parallel sessions. Uh, so uh, what are the topics here? Uh, Tecton interoperability, Jenkins X, uh, GitHub Actions in Jenkins, Cloud Integrations, uh, Open Telemetry and Observability. All of these are topics related to other projects. Uh, so it's basically interoperability, integrations, and this is how Jenkins works. It's uh, rather about integrations with other systems, uh, parts of the continuous delivery foundation or not. Uh, we are happy uh, to support these integrations anywhere. Also, we will have a discussion about uh, um, uh, core Jenkins and its evolution. So there is a topic about uh, plugin end of life policy. We'll talk about the uh, goal of updating, terminology updating, the Jenkins core. And then we'll talk about uh, Java 11 and 17. 
And uh, last but not least, we have a discussion about Jenkins Kubernetes Operator, which is a new sub-project uh, to join uh, um, uh, Jenkins. And if you use uh, Jenkins and Kubernetes, this is definitely something you would like to consider. After that, we'll have Ignite Talks and demos. So if you're a member of the chat, if you have access to the agenda Google Doc, feel free to make proposals because we still have a lot of slots for Ignite Talks and demos. And uh, if you want to present anything about Jenkins, uh, with slides, without slides, just live demo, uh, please do so. This is uh, the session especially for that. And uh, then we will have a um, closing session and a happy hour, uh, which is likely to happen either in Zoom or in a work adventure, depending on whether we will get the system running by this time. Okay. So you may have experienced some issues with connecting uh, to this uh, event. Um, we will be sending links in the chat later. And uh, these are uh, temporary links for all these sessions. And uh, I believe that Mark will be able to confirm these links going forward. And uh, yeah, in uh, the worst case, we have a uh, Slack. I'll share the links where we can do the coordination. So you may ask where to go. For newcomers, yes, uh, you start from the newcomer track, and then if you feel that uh, you've got enough uh, information, you can just switch to, to classic contributing to Jenkins track, and it's up to you. For seasoned contributors, of course, we recommend to start from end user panel, uh, because uh, this is a session when end users will be talking to us. Yeah, probably they will have some uh, uh, topics to share, maybe not uh, that. Uh, positive feedback, but this is why we invited them. So, and if this will be in the first session, so usually it's uh, contributors doing presentations and the users asking questions, but we will uh, try uh, the opposite. Way. And then of course, break out sessions and everyone is welcome to join our happy hour. So we will have more chat. Uh, if you don't fall asleep by this time, it will be something like 8 p.m. UTC, I believe, or 7 p.m. UTC. So not that late. Okay, now, regarding discussions, again, everyone is welcome to participate, uh, share your feedback, share your proposals, and you know, do lightning talks. Uh, we also have a code of conduct. Uh, this code of conduct is based on contributor covenant, so uh, please be nice, respect everyone, and uh, well, uh, there is a lot uh, more words, but it's like that. For the conversation, we have a, a Jenkins Contributor Summit uh, channel on the CDF Slack. If you want to join, uh, there is uh, there are guidelines how to join. So you should follow these guidelines so that you can connect, can connect with arbitrary email and it's basically just uh, clicking this link, entering your email, receiving the invitation and then accepting it. So if you want to join, please follow that and you will be able uh, to participate in the summit. Uh, so we will use uh, this uh, Slack channel for all kinds of communications. And again, we will post links uh, to the slides, etc. there in parallel with uh, the chat. Okay. This is all with the introduction. Now we have State of the Union. So this is a, a summary of uh, everything going on in Jenkins. And uh, this time we made uh, some improvements because one of the feedback uh, topics from the previous years was that State of the Union is too long. Uh, we addressed this feedback and now we will try to do all uh, the updates in 40 minutes. So we have something like 10 people who will be doing uh, a lot of Ignite talks right now and get ready. So. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so I'll start from uh, some governance updates and then we will switch to project updates, etc. First of all, I would like to thank Marky Jackson. Uh, so at the last time he was a board member and Jenkins events officer, Marky has decided to step down, but yeah, thanks a lot uh, for all your contributions, Marky. And when you're ready, you're welcome back to our community. Uh, then, uh, yeah, we will talk about uh, Evelyn and me later. We will have some updates on communication channels, thanks to our contributors, also treasury and community awards. There are many other topics we can discuss during breakout sessions and later. So yeah, since Mark uh, stepped down, we invoked our process for temporary board members, and we would like to congratulate Evelyn and Wilkers uh, for joining the Jenkins Governance Board, uh, effective, uh, I believe, February 20th. So Evelina will be a fifth member of the uh, Jenkins Governance Board, along with uh, me, Gavin Morgan, uh, 
only Hafner and Kosuke, and Evelyn intends to focus on end user communications. And for example, the today's end user panel is actually inspired by Evelina. Unfortunately, she is unable to join today, but we follow up on the discussions we had uh, for the last month. Uh, okay, also update for me. Uh, yeah, I became uh, uh, acting Jenkins events officer, so I will be uh, go to contact if you want to organize an event uh, regarding Jenkins, etc. And I'm also joining uh, the CDF for over technical oversight committee starting from July 1st. So before that, it was Kosuke representing the Jenkins project there. And if you have any questions uh, to the CDF, just uh, contact me and we will be able um, to follow up. And uh, again, my job there is representing the Jenkins project, uh, not uh, making decisions for the Jenkins project, as announced in the mailing list. And any feedback and suggestions will be always welcome. Okay. A few major updates on the communication channels. Uh, I believe Damien will have uh, some uh, more to say later, or maybe Damien uh, would like to just uh, summarize the updates now. Do you like to do it, Damien? Okay, then it's me. So firstly, uh, RC used to be our main uh, communication channel. It's not long actually true. We still use RC, but uh, it's just a first class citizen along with many other channels. Uh, but we had to migrate it from a free node IRC to LibreChat during, due to the events well, everybody heard of in the open source community. And now uh, for our main channels uh, are on the LibreChat and we closed uh, about eight other channels because we decided that mailing keys and uh, Gitter are enough for this purpose. So if you haven't migrated to LibreChat yet, please do so because Jenkins and also uh, hosting um, and the release teams are there and also infrastructure teams. So if you participate in uh, various infrastructure related activities, it's definitely a good channel to join. Regarding the rest, yeah, you may have seen these slides. We actually have too many communication channels. And uh, thanks to Kevin Morgan, uh, Olivier Varna, and other contributors, we we're actually handling this problem. Um, and we introduced uh, another channel to resolve uh, issues with too many channels. So uh, thanks to this course, uh, we were able to deploy a community Jenkins IO. It's a sponsored service uh, where we intend to move the most of conversations. It's not that we abandon mailing lists, we will keep uh, using them, uh, but uh, many uh, conversations for special interest groups, etc., can now happen in the community Jenkins IO. And due to today's presentations, we will be referring to it multiple times. So if you want uh, to have a discussion on any topic, uh, it's an additional channel you can consider. And yeah, if you have an always in a discourse, it's a kind of forum where everyone mm -hmm. can contribute and create their own topics. And uh, what we have there, we have uh, placeholders for using Jenkins, for contributing, for various community things, also language groups like uh, Espanol Jenkins, Jenkins Francais, Jenkins uh, Ru, and uh, they will be also Chinese uh, Jenkins soon. And uh, yeah, again, everyone is welcome to contribute and expand this platform as a central communication point uh, for uh, unofficial Jenkins communications. Official communications will still remain in the mailing list for the time being. Okay. Um, Warren update about uh, our cash flows. So, as usual, we have not that uh, much uh, updates and we don't have much money in our pockets, but we have some. Uh, so we have around thirty thousand uh, dollars um, uh, over the past year. We invested a lot in outreach. We invested a lot in our infrastructure. So, so we started from thirty k in two thousand nineteen. Now we are down to thirteen. The most of them are still allocated on SPI, but we will be moving to LFX crowdfunding soon. Uh, it's arranged. We just need some uh, governance uh, bandwidth to do the migration. Um, and uh, currently we have uh, quite a lot of money reserved for Google Summer of Code. So it's for Google Summer of Code uh, 2020 and 2019 because we were unable to spend all the budget uh, because of coronavirus, etc. So we have some money reserved and we will still uh, receive stipend for this year so that we would be able to sponsor students uh, and provide travel plans should uh, the situation normalize uh, by, the, by this autumn. Uh, and 
generally for contributors, please uh, reach out if you have ideas how to spend money. This is why we receive money from donations. We expect to spend them and to facilitate a Jenkins solution. We have multiple initiatives on our roadmap and we invite everyone to invest so that we could actually spend them. For example, documentation projects, design projects, or just developing new features, all is possible. And yeah, thanks to our sponsors. Uh, this list is not complete. So yeah, the Jenkins project uh, kind of survived from this amount of money. So you can see 13,000 uh, and well, it's not that much. We spent a lot more on infrastructure every month. And uh, thanks to our sponsors uh, who make it possible, Continuous Delivery Foundation, uh, AWS, CloudBees, Red Hat, GitHub, JFrog, also, so all of them uh, invest uh, uh, a lot of uh, money to support uh, Jenkins uh, via various programs. And also um, there are many other companies which support us through open source programs. Uh, for example, uh, yeah, I just uh, referred to Discourse. It's uh, sponsored uh, by uh, uh, Discourse House, Discourse Contraction Kit uh, Incorporated, basically the company in between um, uh, Discourse. And uh, there are many other sponsored companies uh, helping us uh, in think our infrastructure and uh, other services. And uh, yeah, thanks to everyone who supports uh, the project. Okay, uh, last update before we switch uh, to more interesting parts. And uh, Cadiz Liberty Foundation uh, Community Awards. So if you participated in the ceremony yesterday, there were multiple awards, actually eight awards uh, plus project awards. So maybe uh, 14 in total, uh, uh, focused on uh, different uh, contributors. And there were multiple uh, Jenkins awards because Jenkins is a created project. So we were able to have three awards this year, most valuable Jenkins contributor, most valuable Jenkins advocate and security MVP. And we would like to congratulate the winners of these awards. So Tim Jacomb, uh, second year in a row, he's a most valuable Jenkins contributor and it's well deserved. Uh, thanks for your contributions team uh, to various areas, including infrastructure, uh, user experience, uh, configurations code, etc., etc. It's hard to say why Tim doesn't contribute this year. Um, Daniel, uh, yeah, Daniel uh, has been a Jenkins security officer since uh, 2015 when this position was introduced. And uh, this year we were finally able to vote for Daniel because this year everyone can be nominated uh, before the club these employees were barred from receiving awards. But uh, this time, yeah, finally we are able to recognize Daniel uh, who has been driving the security and the most of the advisories over the past years. And well, it's, a serious job. I believe we had almost 100 uh, advisors by this point. Uh, and yeah, a lot of security issues disclosed, all of them required intonation. And again, thanks, Daniel, for that. Uh, so, yeah, most valuable Jenkins advocate, that's me. Uh, I can share updates later. I won't place myself. And what I would like to say that Cara de la Mark, uh, currently uh, the leader of the uh, Jenkins Cloud Native Seek, uh, she became a top GitOps evangelist because yeah, Cara is one of the top promoters of uh, uh, GitOps uh, and also of uh, secrets management and GitOps. So yeah, congrats, Cara. And I guess that's it for today. And we can start from uh, project and team updates. These updates will be relatively short because we had a contributor summit three months ago. Uh, so we will have uh, reduced updates compared to previous events when we had six or nine months updates. Still, we have quite a lot of content and we have something like 30 minutes left. So let's uh, get started. Jenkins security. Uh, Wadik. Oleg, I think you may need to promote uh, Vadek as a as a, a panelist. I don't seem to have the permission to promote him. So sorry for the disruption there. Okay. Yeah. By the way, I have a um, Slack open on my phone, so if there is any distraction, you can just ping me there. Oh, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I added uh, Vadek. Anyone else? I should add. So could you hear me? 
Yes, yeah, Vadek, thank you. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Oleg, for the reaction. I didn't thought you were talking so much uh, until the, the point there, so perfect. So uh, next, uh, just for the introduction, I'm talking here instead of uh, Daniel Beck. Daniel is just taking some PTO for having a longer weekend. So uh, please move on. So to reply to your question, Daniel, uh, Oleg, in terms of uh, number of advisories since the beginning of the project, it's 124. So not everything from Daniel alone. Uh, we were a team uh, recently about security. At the beginning, it was mainly Koshuke doing the thing. So just for the information. In the last three months, we published 10 advisories with a total of 46 vulnerabilities in total. So that's interesting, the number of growing and things like that. So we need to keep the pace in a sense. Please, next slide. So uh, what we did in particular outside of the advisory directly, uh, recently we did some mentoring for a master project in the Jenkins security area. It was with uh, four students from Marseille in the south of France. They were doing some auditing for a lot of plugins. Perhaps as a maintainer, you have received some of the reports from them or things like that. It was during two months and at the moment, 14 vulnerability were published. So we were very interested in the the outcome there, but also in the investment during the process, during the project, they were very curious. All the things there were interesting for us, for them, for the project. So that was just a very nice success from my point of view. Just in case, there is a blog post if you want to read it for uh, for more detail. And especially at the big at the, um, the bottom of the blog post, there is a sentence saying that if you're interested in such project as an intern, as a student, as just someone wanted to do a bit more security things, please contact us. It's with pleasure that we will set up something to, to work it together. Please, next slide. Sorry. So uh, also concerning the different initiative we are doing, uh, recently we got another XSS in uh, credentials. So that was impacting a lot of instances. And so we decided to rewamp a bit, to reset a bit the effort we were doing with content security policy. In a sense, with that epic that we have the link at the middle of the, um, the slide, it's something that is really interesting in terms of protection against XSS, especially in the context of Jenkins. We have a lot of JavaScript that are inlined inside the different page and if we are removing them we will unlock the possibility to have a csp configured at the instance level and so protecting against a lot of xss good feeling at the moment 90 percent something like that so if you want to help on that area please contact us as well there is information in the ticket and also you can see some pull requests sometimes uh, about unaligning javascript content so the, the topic is interesting, not only for Jenkins, if you want to learn more about security in general, that's also a good opportunity. Next slide, please. And also, uh, Alex Er was doing a very good job about the hosting request because he was doing some preliminary tests, preliminary audit did in terms of security it was mainly about like checking if there was some credential usage some method that could be dangerous and things like that this kind of preliminary audit was very useful for us in the jenkins security to not spend time to do full audit on every hosting request and with that quick approach that was very useful to save us a lot of time because alex is doing the auditing or at least was doing the auditing during the hosting review about the quality and things like that. So if there is any volunteer about this kind of part, this kind of job, please also reach out to us. That could be useful. And I think that's quite done for the things we did. What is next for the, the security team? So soonish we will have a, a new advisory for the next core release with some vulnerability i cannot disclose anything at the moment you will receive normally information uh, soonish and we continue to do the different auditing we are doing for the different plugin and things like that so expect to, to hear about us uh, in the future i would say we will find something else thank you uh, thank you, Vadik. I will uh, do a quick update about uh, other topics related to Jenkins Secure uh, Software Delivery Lifecycle. So this is a follow-up from the previous contributor summit when we discussed this topic uh, in depth. 
uh, one of our follow-ups was to continue with uh, JAP229 continuous developer on Jenkins components. And I'm happy to say that uh, this uh, initiative uh, got uh, some progress. Uh, it got some adoption and actually you can try it out if you maintain Jenkins plugins. So it's uh, fully available for adoption. Uh, there are some things in there, for example, there is a stock project uh, related to um, uh, um, improved versioning uh, um, of uh, releases in our CD flow. But uh, anyway, uh, you can uh, start using that and you can start adopting new plugins if you want to deliver uh, Jenkins plugins uh, for every pull request and for the merge commit. Okay. Another update related uh, to security. Uh, we started a joint partnership uh, with uh, the Linux Foundation uh, team, uh, particularly LFX and with Sneak. Uh, and uh, the idea there is that LFX security is uh, um, one of the uh, hosting ser host services offered by the Linux Foundation, which intends uh, to perform all kinds of security. So currently it has two services inside, one is Sneak, and it's focused on dependency scanning, analysis, or some license scanning and compliance. And uh, soon there will be blue bracket introduced. It's already available for preview for limited number of projects. So it will be basically analysis uh, for secrets in the code base, for various misconfigurations if you use configuration files, and also for uh, common mistakes in the code. Uh, we participated in the project in order to adopt uh, the new version. And uh, if you're interested to discuss why, uh, feel free to reach out. So there are a few examples of how it looks like. Uh, so this, for example, dependency analysis for Jenkins with vulnerabilities being uh, disclosed. Uh, we also can get uh, issue details uh, uh, with uh, references to CVEs. Um, uh, Jenkins can uh, issue its own uh, CVEs because we uh, CNA, thanks uh, to Daniel Beck. So for all our advisors, it says we we'll release information about uh, vulnerabilities on our own and uh, they become available in the database and then they become available in our scanners. Um, same for license analysis. So you can analyze uh, what uh, licenses have been used and sometimes uh, components use licenses which you're unable to use inside your company. And you can analyze that. So I'm showing you a red herring uh, case when uh, we have a GPL3 library in configuration as code plugin. Uh, please be sure it's not a concern in this case, but it's a nice example that we definitely need to work on false positives. Okay, and yeah, as I said, we participate in a pilot project. So Jenkins was one of the project first projects to join, uh, and um, there is there is LFX security to zero. It will be adopted by the Jenkins infrastructure team, and it will be adopted uh, for Jenkins once there are particular features available. Uh, we are waiting for them because currently we cannot uh, really adopt uh, because of massive number of false positives. And once uh, the fix is available, we will be happy to try them out and to stop our uh, scanning pipelines uh, powered by Sneak and LFX security. So thanks a lot to all contributors who are looking into this story. Next topic is Jenkins infrastructure. So Damien, would you like to take over? Yes. Can you hear me? Is the sound yes. okay? Okay. So I'm replacing Olivier today. He has a child who is sick, so I'm replacing him. Um, he's excused and a good excuse. <laughs> so can you switch to the next slide? So the, what happened during the past month on the infrastructure? Um, the cost increased. These are facts. Uh, it's almost 2000 bucks per month more. Uh, you see that also the, the difference between the Let's say the repartition between AWS, Azure, and other uh, sponsor on the cost we can evaluate has shifted a bit. We depend a bit less on Azure. Uh, next slide, please. So may, we are working and trying to determine if this cost increase come from things we can work on or if it's intrinsic. So we have more downloads of more plugins, more people visiting. So we cannot say stop. This is an intrinsic, intrinsic cost increase, but there are still some levers we can work on to be sure that we control the costs. So we'll speak about that, but mainly we have two main persona that are responsible for the services we provide, the users that download plugins or visit the pages 
and the developer will use CI Jenkins IO in order to build the plugins to contribute to validate the codes. So these are the two uh, kind of person that we want to serve. Next slide, please. So one of the most important achievements has been the download mirror. It's for the person of the Jenkins user. So what has been done is providing more visibility for people and better performances. And we reduce the time between one artifact, a plugin, a core release is published and deployed and the time it's available for everyone across the world. Uh, one of the main services that you can use as a Jenkins user if you have any issue or have question, you can add on the query string one of the free elements on that, uh, on that example that will show you a nice web view to see where are you located, which mirror are you using currently, and a bunch of stats that could help you diagnose. The goal is you should be able to be autonomous to determine if there is an issue on the Jenkins infrastructure or on your network or on the mirror and switch mirror if it's the case. Uh, next slide, please. Another element is more transparency. This is, this is for every persona and for the maintainer as well. So we try as much as possible to give you a state of the infrastructure on status.jenkins.io, which is a new web service. The goal of that service uh, is to let you, let you know if there is something going wrong on our side on on your side. Everyone is able to contribute if you detect something faster than us that can happen and it happens. You can open a pull request to start an incident. You have access to metrics. You have access to maintenance window on the future. And each time there is an incident, an outage or something, we try to be as much transparent as possible and publish this postmortem afterwards. So don't hesitate if you have any issue, propose, proposal for improvement, because it's brand new, we are far from perfect, but we try to give as much information as possible. So you will be again autonomous to determine if it's an issue on our side or on your side. Next slide, please. Uh, so the next step for us in the upcoming months, will we started and we are going to keep the priority on controlling the costs. So that means diversifying cloud providers to be sure that we we don't have a big outage, we limit the blast radius when something goes down. And also because different clouds provide different services for different costs. So if we can use a lot, we will have a more sustainable infrastructure in the future and an ability to switch the costs and control them a bit more, as much as possible. Next slide, please. Also a big effort is currently being done and will continue to be done during the summer on CI Jenkins IO because that one is responsible for a part of the cost increase. So there are more activity, but we can still control more elements. In order to do that, we need to improve measurements to be sure that we control everything. And so we have foundational work to do. The main idea is to make that Jenkins inst instance, the, let's say the reference for everyone using config as code, automation, multi-cloud providers. Next slide, please. So just one slide to thank all the contributors to the infrastructure because we have people working day to day, but we have people doing valuable work punctually, weekly, monthly, depends. So if you're interested, if you like this, don't hesitate. We try to be as open as possible. This is a shared infrastructure. Everything is open except the credential, I hope. Uh, but for the rest, um, yeah, thank you very much for everyone who contributed. Even if it was one line of documentation, it's still a contribution. If it's reporting an issue, it's still a contribution. We need you, don't hesitate. Go visit us. Next slide, please. Mainly you can learn on the static page on your own page. You can uh, check the roadmap, you can join us on IRC and you are welcome to join our weekly meetings. So you can find on the link on the slides, the slides have been shared on, on the chat. If you want to join us, participate or just spectate, you are more than welcome. Thanks, that will be all for me. Thank you. And yeah, then we will have some updates from special interest groups uh, and details. And the first group uh, we got invited is uh, UX group. 
So, team, uh, would you like to share uh, what's going on there? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, cool. So, a few months ago, um, we got uh, new build status icons and weather icons. Um, that's in the latest LTS 2.289. Um, Uli's been doing some work on Bootstrap 5 and eCharts 5. Um, I think those are all available now. Um, and some of some of the major plugins are updated to them. JUnit is work in progress, but should be done soon, I think. Um, trend charts are configurable for the plugins that have been updated to use the new versions. Um, so you've got a few more options kind of to replace the different size options you used to have in the old graphs. Um, there's a pull request dashboard plugin um, around, which is getting some integrations with different plugins. So you can customize what your pull request dashboard looks like, um, integrate with like code coverage and warnings NG um, and probably others. Uh, there's a, a pipeline view plugin that I've been working on, which kind of pulls the blue ocean graph into the classic UI. Um, and there's a work in progress pull request for um, logs as well. Um, so it's quite nice um, and hopefully means that we're able to get rid of Blue Ocean uh, for some of the people who don't enjoy it so much. Um, and recently, um, Gavin Mogan's done some work on the plugin site and searching um, release notes. And we had a, a, another contribution to give suspended plugin pages. Previously, they were just four or four pages, but now um, there's a link explaining it. Uh, so all some good improvements there. Thank you. And for some items uh, on this list, uh, if you want to know more, um, currently we have a, a section on the community Jenkins IO, which is called showing off. And this is a session where we I can find all the recent updates. So for example, let's take a look. Showing off and here Tim uh, talks about Lotion, but in classic UI, basically this is what he announced. And here you can find uh, some examples and links to the repository. So this is um, one of the ways for you to get new information because we encourage contributors to actually post big updates here about what they're doing. Instead of spending much time writing a blog post, etc., here you can put uh, an update just in a few minutes, and uh, we will be happy to use this update to promote the uh, work you're doing in the Jenkins project. So, thanks, team, for this work, and uh, thanks to all of UI UX Seek for all the improvements in the recent versions, because yeah, Jenkins has changed a lot over the past year. Uh, as an experiment, I launched the version from February last year, and uh, uh, from today's version uh, one week ago, and yeah, they were completely different uh, in terms of how they look. So nice work, and yeah, looking forward to see um, uh, plugin monitoring and looking forward to see blue oceans. Okay. Thanks, team. Moving on. Or is there anyone else uh, from the UXC who wants to share the experiences? Sorry. Okay, then platform seek. Mark, would you like to share that break? Yes. So the platform SIG continues to meet and discuss platform related topics like Docker and Java versions and operating systems. Um, we've upgraded the Java versions and the operating systems inside our Docker images. We're really pleased with the results we're getting from the plugin installation manager tool. It's now included in the Docker images for the controller and the a documentation PR has been submitted by Sudakar, a new contributor. So we're delighted to have new contributors who are submitting relevant and significant documentation improvements. Um, Mac OS support improvements have arrived in core. FreeBSD support improvements are coming and we're seeing lots of people doing testing and wider use with ARM platforms. So it's not just an Intel world anymore. Next slide. Uh, we'll be discussing in the platform in the summit today, 
upcoming changes that have been proposed relative to Java 11. There are some different choices we need to make in terms of what the path should be forward for Java 11. And likewise, in September, we expect that the Open JDK project will release their next long-term support release, JD JDK 17. JDK 17 will be discussed in that same contributor track. And we have ongoing need for further Docker updates, including upgrades to Java and operating system upgrades as new operating systems are released and new Java versions are released. That's all that I've got, Oleg. Okay, thank you. And the next cloud native seek. So Kara, Bartik, Vipkov, and Shruti will uh, give a quick update. Hi, I'm Cara de la Marc. I, um, I lead the Cloud Native SIG, and really it's a space for individuals to, to be able to um, bring their ideas on how to make Jenkins itself more Cloud Native. And I don't know why I'm not showing up, but um, really you can bring the ideas that you want to work on. And we've had an, a fantastic year so far because a number of people have brought great initiatives to move forward. And we have three of those individual contributors that are going to speak to you today. We have Bartek Antoniak, Vibhav Bobad, and Shruti Chaturvati. And Bartek will be speaking to you about the Kubernetes operator for Jenkins, which he has been involved in leading and also leading a GSOC project on that Kubernetes operator. Vibhav will speak about the Tekton client plugin, which he created the POC for and has been working on and um, the very exciting developments there. And then he will also speak about the Cloud Events plugin, which uh, is now a GSOC project that Truti is our mentee for. And all three of these individuals will be leading breakout sessions later in the day. So please do join them because they are bound to be incredibly interesting. The Cloud Native SIG itself meets bi-weekly on Fridays at 11 um, UTC. So please do join us, it's a very open meeting. We're very friendly. You can just bring your ideas and chat with us, ask questions, get involved, and we hope to see more of you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Bartek. Thank you, Oleg. Um, hi, everyone. So I would like to keep it simple uh, now because we have another session later this, this afternoon. So we can we can deep dive into particular topic and engage, engage with the with the wider community. And um, I would like to focus on three key areas, uh, which is roadmap and future releases. So what team is currently working on um, then move on to uh, a summary of the feedback, mostly from our community talks and some dedicated uh, feedback forum to understand how people use Jenkins in a cloud native environment, mostly in, in terms of Kubernetes and, and how we can improve the overall experience. And finally, um, talk uh, briefly about our involvement in the community space because this is the very first time we are part of the Contributor Summit and recently Jenkins Operator itself became official sub-project of Jenkins. So there is more yet to do, there are more yet to come. Could you please move on to the next slide? Okay, so one of the, the, the major uh, things we are currently working on is a new API schema for the, the Jenkins Operator. We want to basically pro provide more granular custom resources instead of having one big configuration file. We would like to have more smaller individual parts, which can be configured independently uh, just to increase overall developer experience, as well as um, think about modular code base, which is easier to extend. We can implement uh, support for other platforms, uh, more capabilities. People basically can contribute in a better way uh, because we don't have this monolithic architecture and it's fully modular. And apart from that, it also helps with uh, testing strategy uh, because we can test individual pieces running in individual reconciliation controllers when it comes to operator pattern. And beyond that, we also want to uh, provide better integration with third-party tooling 
especially in area of cloud native technology landscape. Uh, for example, sidecar injection allows us to integrate Jenkins with service mesh technology, for example, right? Also, we want to stay on top of the um, technology upgrade um, SDK, all components, and, and bring um, bug fixes and improvements over time. Um, could you move on to the next slide? Um, speaking of um, summary, um, the, this is the slide. Uh, we, we, first, we wanted to understand how people use uh, Jenkins operator. And as you can see, uh, the Jenkins operator is mainly used in big enterprises. Uh, they have uh, quite special problems, mostly related to multi-tenancy, doing everything at scale, and also some security and compliance uh, issues uh, we want to uh, simplify when using Kubernetes operator. Next slide, please. Um, what are the main problems opera operator already solves? Um, so this is the plugin management and dependency help problem. So we can install uh, plugins programmatically. We can uh, manage versions thanks to this uh, plugin installation tool, which is part of the implementation. Um, also, it brings a more scalable and better solution for developers. So the entry point uh, is lower for developers, uh, they can easily uh, build and deploy fully operational Jenkins at day one. Moreover, they can configure everything in code, which opens room for GitOps model, uh, immutable infrastructure, and basically scaling uh, DevOps team in general. Uh, next slide, please. And of course, we still have plenty uh, things to improve. And I would appreciate to understand what are your, uh, what are the pain points uh, based on the summary uh, from, from the feedback form, backup and restore is still the thing, especially on demand, how people can control backup and restore, how backup restore strategy should work in Kubernetes um, in a Jenkins. Um, more granularity for configuration assets. So how DevOps team can configure individual pieces uh, using uh, configuration as called. And again, plugins management related to versioning, compatibility, caching, all of that, uh, we still need to work on that. And I believe um, there will be a, a last slide. Uh, do you move on, Oleg? Yeah. Yeah, so um, last but not least, our in, uh, involvement in community space. So as mentioned earlier, Jenkins operator uh, became uh, official sub project. So we are fully committed to be part of the, of, of, the, of the governance board of the Jenkins community, contribute to Jenkins itself, be active. And also we take part in Google Summer of Code. Uh, we try to implement additional security capabilities related to installing plugins. Basically, we would like to have um, an additional security layer when installing plugins and, and monitoring security vulnerabilities on the fly. And, and also it's worth mentioning um, that we plan to have closer cooperation with Continuous Delivery Foundation. Um, I don't want to disclose any any particular information. Um, just uh, we'll keep you informed as soon as we uh, finish the formal steps. And of course, uh, dedicated category on discourse. Uh, feel free to uh, bring some new topics, especially let us know how we can engage. Maybe there is a particular topic we can uh, talk about um, in community uh, meeting. So that's pretty much all. Thank you very much. Ask a quick question. Uh, maybe we could postpone it later because we are already running out of time. Uh, okay. Or uh, doing them asynchronously if you don't mind. Okay. Okay, so hi guys, I'm Vibhav. Um, so before we move on to like the plugins that the cloud native site is actively working on right now, 
would, I would like to kind of talk about this uh, idea of factors of interoperability based on which we have chosen to work on these things. So the first thing uh, I would like to talk about is like factors of interoperability means that, you know, you, when CICDs need to work together, they need to figure out some stuff like uh, they need to figure out through what factors they can work together. So we figured out that there are two different factors in which this could happen. You could work directly with other CICD tools by in a client-based approach, or you could indirectly work through uh, events or like data streams, which would kind of trigger jobs based on, you know, uh, just uh, events that might happen from other CICD and you would listen on them. And based on them, you would uh, trigger your jobs or like pipelines. So this is the approach we went with uh, when thinking about like what projects to pick up. So looking at the examples, uh, next slide. Uh, hold on. Yeah, looking at the examples uh, we have, so for the direct interoperability, we, uh, we want to focus on Tecton because Tecton is, uh, is now like the first class Kubernetes uh, CI CD pipeline system. And it, it provides a really good way to create pipelines which are based on CRDs and Kubernetes. And it is uh, very, very modular in its way. So uh, for that, we started with the Tecton client plugin for Jenkins. And uh, this, is, this is the first take at you know, interoperability between uh, Jenkins and Tecton. But from the Jenkins point of view, if uh, Jenkins had to do something similar where it had to call uh, a Tecton custom resource or create a Tecton, uh, sorry, where, Jen uh, where Tecton had to create a Jenkins job or like uh, Tecton had to trigger a Jenkins job. For this, uh, there is work going on in which uh, uh, the Jenkins uh, Tecton should be able to create a custom task which triggers a, a Jenkins job. So for this, a custom task controller is being worked on and you can see the link uh, that is given in the uh, slide over here, which where you can get like more information on how that would work. And this is direct interoperability we are talking about in this case, but what about cases where, you know, CI CD systems are like so disparate that, you know, you possibly cannot just uh, uh, call like in, in some different kind of world, you possibly cannot just, you know, do like client calls and you would rather uh, use like direct uh, data streams or like events to make that happen. So the first go at that was uh, using cloud events. So cloud events are something that was already adopted in Tecton directly. Uh, but now there is work going on in the in Tecton for creating a new cloud events controller, which will use the continuous delivery foundations uh, uh, CDF vocabulary, uh, like the certain vocabulary which could be used across CI CD systems to kind of standardize what kind of events happen across CI CD systems. And you can check out SIG events in C CDF for more information, but using this standard, we can basically kind of you know, say that, okay, upon, upon this event in Jenkins, I want this thing to happen in Tecton or upon this event in Tecton, I want this thing to happen in Jenkins. So for that, uh, we uh, started the GSOC project for cloud events plugin based on the cloud events uh, controller that was existing in Tecton at the time. And slowly we are moving towards, uh, you know, getting uh, a feel of what interoperability looks like. Um, there is also a POC which is being worked on in the SIG events uh, in CDF, so uh, which kind of which shows the interoperability between Tecton and Captain. But I hope in time we'll be able to do that with Jenkins and Tecton soon. So I'll talk a little bit more about the Tecton client plugin itself. So it's uh, oh, like, yeah. So it's uh, the Tecton client plugin here. So based on what's given on the repo itself, the Tecton client plugin uh, kind of allows us to call Tecton directly. And Tecton is basically uh, based on the repo. Tecton provides the ability to create uh, KTS style resources for declaring CI CD style pipelines. 
So you can use uh, Kubernetes CRDs to create uh, pipelines in Kubernetes. And this is very Kubernetes based. And uh, what, uh, so we recently have released version one for uh, Tecton. <laughs> And uh, we, and recently James Tarkin also posted a blog post for using uh, Jenkins with Tecton and Jenkins X. So Oleg, like slides are, sorry to disrupt, slides are shifting around, Oleg. Uh, sorry, uh, am I still connected? Oh, sorry. Yes, yeah. you are. We're back to the outrage advocacy. Sorry, excuse okay. us. No worries. About, uh, sorry about that. Yeah. I was trying uh, to notify in the chat because we're going uh, over time for, for some like 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and yeah, uh, I messed up the slides a bit. Yeah, let's try to accelerate. Okay, that's all right. Okay, so let me continue. Um, so we recently released V1 for Tecton client plugin. And you can go check it out and start playing around with it. But uh, there's some interesting stuff we are working on next for the plugin itself. So we are working on some uh, Tecton cloud configurations with which you could uh, use Tecton from multiple Kubernetes instances and deploy pipelines from multiple on multiple Kubernetes instances from Jenkins. So that's what, something interesting we are working on currently. And we uh, plan on working on a pipeline DSL uh, with which uh, writing Tecton pipelines would, should be easier in Jenkins as well as, uh, and it should be a little more familiar with, to Jenkins users as well to write Tecton in that way uh, and not have to deal with a lot of YAML. And uh, the other stuff we are working on is uh, support files with multiple types. That, that means currently when you uh, give a file in uh, creation or in the plugin, uh, the file cannot contain multiple types. It only has one, it only can have like one resource and not multiple resources. And then currently we have that catalog integration using Jenkins X, uh, which is really cool. Uh, Tecton catalog is basically a catalog of different tasks and uh, different tasks which you can reuse and you won't have to write your own task. So it's basically tasks which have been vetted and created by the Tecton community. And, you know, they keep improving it from time to time and keep releasing a new, uh, new version of the catalog. So it's a very reliable source to, to uh, kind of start using tasks. Uh, so we would like to have better catalog integration. So like uh, the users wouldn't have to figure out where to get the task from. Like they should just have it in their hands in Jenkins. So, and the last thing is cloud events configuration. So this uh, would be quite in the future, but as the cloud events plugin grows uh, and we are able to figure out, you know, how to create things and everything, and we should just be able to map uh, event listeners from uh, Tecton directly to Jenkins uh, things and, you know, kind of figure that out easily without having to do a lot of back and forth. So yeah, that's about it for Tecton. Thank you for listening. I'll now pass the torch to Shruti. Okay, so let's try to elevate a bit. Shruti around. Okay, I suggest that we move forward and then we can return uh, back to that or we will have a breakout session if needed. Okay, Mark, would you uh, do an update on documentation, see? Yes, please. So very briefly, thanks mm -hmm. very much to those who've been involved in improving documentation by adding embedded search. Thanks to the She Code Africa Contributhon for their work on pipeline help and syntax and snippet generator. And thanks to Diraj for becoming the new maintainer of the weekly change log. Next slide. Mm -hmm. uh, we're grateful for do plugin documentation as code, specifically the contributions from Gavin and from Oleg and for the embedded search. Next slide. 
and really want to thank those who are involved in Chi Code Africa, including Zinab and the five contributors from Africa, Onyinye, Sharon, Esther, Cynthia, and Lucy, and our mentors, Kristen and Meg and Angelique and Oleg. Thanks very, very much. We're so grateful for what you did. Next slide. Thank you. And we'll, we'll be doing more of that. And that's really it for me, Oleg. Thanks a bunch. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'll also do a very accelerated update for Locus and Outreach. Uh, so, yeah, as I said, we do a lot of uh, social media management, including Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, Reddit. Uh, please subscribe to any channel. We do a lot of automation and we're looking for contributors. So, if you like writing uh, great content, please do so. And yeah, I always have this course. So, this course for us is not just a play discussions, it's also a lot of um, uh, special uh, um, opportunities for SIG, like doing announcements, uh, doing easy blog posts, uh, showcasing achievements like I presented today, introducing contributors or thank contributors. I will do some of the uh, Ignite talks, but yeah, we intend to use the discourse a lot more. We also plan to keep uh, working on teach programs. So we had CDCon this week. Uh, there will be DevOps World in September. Maybe there will be other major conferences we participate. Uh, uh, it's still yet to be seen. We also participate in outreach programs. So Chicot Africa has just finished. Uh, we have ongoing a Google Summer of Code. Uh, October 1st is in October as always, and we participate. And we plan uh, to run one or two LFX mentorship programs uh, in autumn, uh, basically self-funded uh, to address topics uh, which we can address uh, through existing programs. And uh, also thanks a lot to educational so uh, Alisa, Uli Hafner, Damian, uh, they've been working on this topic and also Wadek uh, who contributed to security uh, investigation and analysis with ex Marcel uh, students. It's also much appreciated and uh, we invite uh, people to contribute to this area as well. So just a uh, shout out to Code Africa contributors. Basically Mark has already said a few words. Um, thanks a lot. And I want to highlight that it's not just about code. We also invest a lot in documentation. For example, Zainab uh, was our mentee in Google season of docs last year. Unfortunately, we haven't been accepted this year, but we will apply again. And you know, for us, it was still a great experience and it uh, provided a lot of opportunities with uh, Ship Code Africa uh, so that we could collaborate uh, between our communities. For the terminology cleanup, uh, there is some uh, major updates. So um, we defined uh, subterms for Jenkins controllers. So we unlocked the most of contributions. Uh, there are more than 50 pull requests submitted over three months, and uh, there are more upcoming from what I see in the bug tracker and uh, in the conversations. And there is a uh, job uh, by Angelic Jarrett about the inclusive for terminology guidelines and continuous updates so that we actually make a formal standard within our community. And is uh, Many other projects we are looking for contributors. There is a link here which is pointing again to this course, which provides all the information how you contribute and what types of contributions we are currently looking for. And thanks a lot uh, to everyone who wants to contribute. Uh, for Google Summer of Code uh, this year, we have five uh, projects. Uh, again, a standard framework. We do a lot of office hours, we will do project updates. Hopefully, we'll have some blogs about JSOC this year. And uh, thanks a lot to five students who participate. So Shruti, Aditya, Harshit, uh, Atihara, and uh, Bukit. Uh, they work on different areas in the Jenkins community on important topics, uh, mostly around cloud native ecosystem, but also infrastructure, uh, foundation plugins, like in Git, and we much appreciate it. So is Shruti back online? Shruti and I were just discussing Oleg, and and she was agreeable to hold the her discussion on cloud events inside the breakout session that's going okay, to be cloud well, native. Let's uh, put it to breakout. And yeah, what I wanted to say again that it's a great time to contribute. So there is a lot of opportunities uh, for contributing. If you're a newcomer, please join Mark's uh, session uh, for newcomer contributor. If you're an uh, experienced contributor, we will start an user panel, uh, maybe with a five minutes break. And then uh, at the end of the hour, we will start breakout sessions. Uh, I intend to start them on time. So we'll have plugin end of life policy, technology interability, observability, and home telemetry. And then we'll have more sessions continuing. 
And thanks uh, a lot to everyone uh, who joined the kickoff. We apologize for issues uh, with the uh, um, uh, webinar link, and we will definitely run a retrospective in order to make our events better. And also, you have a lot of opportunities to share your feedback. I've already posted the link uh, to the feedback form. Uh, please use that. Also, there is discourse uh, discussion where you can find, or just use uh, our Slack and uh, put your comments there. And that's it. So thanks a lot. Uh, so we can start, but actually we are going to have a five minutes break before the next session. So we start at 20 minutes uh, or at 50 if you're in India. Um, and yeah, thanks a lot uh, to everyone. Uh, let's uh, keep working together. And I will share the presentation, uh, the feedback form link, because many of you may have already had feedback to share. Thank you, Oleg. And I've had to revise the Zoom link for the newcomer session. So in the five minute break, those of you who would like to join the newcomer session, if you could just send me a chat message, I'll post the link to that newcomer session in the chat message as, as well. Uh, that way you've it's accessible to you. Yes, and uh, for uh, breakout sessions, we will continue here. So Thanks. Yeah, so, so then, see you in five minutes. See you in five minutes. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, I'll stop the recording because I'll uh, start the new recording once we are back. <laughs>